The Aristocraft SD45 is not a new engine to large-scale trains. It has been available for several years and has proven itself a reliable unit. It is now available in some new road names. When you unpack the unit, make sure to look on the back side for the handrails that will need to be installed. Our particular road name came with some road name signs to install on the unit. There'll also be some hook and loop couplers, as well as an order form for rolling stock metal wheels and if you'd like extra weights for your SD45. The Aristocraft Owner's Manual has some general instructions on the unit and we would suggest that you read it thoroughly before putting your unit in operation. One of the first things you're going to need to do is install the handrails. We have found by using a small screwdriver, we can clear out the paint from inside where the handrails will be attached. It will make it easier. We also steal our wide seam ripper out of the drawer so we can use that to clear up some of the circular holes of paint when we go to install the handrails. The handrails have an angled piece of metal that you must push into the plastic. We have found it's easier to make them a little bit narrower when you push them in. It'll be a, a little easier to push them in and it doesn't affect the operation of them staying in place. You can always glue these in place as well. You install handrails on either side. You will also be installing additional handrails on the front and the back of the SD45. Here we again use our little screwdriver to clean out the paint and then we just push the metal angle into the hole to secure the handrails. You will also be installing handrails on either side of the unit and they work pretty much the same way. We found that using a piece of foam helps us push the metal bracket into the plastic and then we don't risk using any type of metal instrument that would scratch the paint. You'll also be putting a handrail on the back of the unit, one on the front, one on the back, one on each side and you're done. Our particular road name came with two signs to put on the side. We used the internet to find some prototypical photos so we knew exactly where to place them on the handrails. The Aristocraft SD45 is about 28 and a half inches long. It's a little less than six and a half inches high. It's about four inches wide and weighs in at about 9.8 pounds. This is one handsome engine. The paint job was crisp. There are details throughout, including the wheels, operating windows, the steps that are see-through, and windshield wipers that look like they might actually work. The inside is also detailed with an engineer and control panel. If you look carefully, you can find a lot of details on this unit. It also has modular electrical connections if you want to run the unit with battery power. Even the handrails have an actual chain that is used on the unit. On the top of the unit, you will find details as well. There's a prototypical horn as well as prototypical fans and grills on the side. There is a top panel that's removed to expose the operational switches. Make sure you read in the owner's manual how to use the smoke machine. There's switches for battery, track, motor on and off, smoke on and off, and lights on and off. There is a smaller panel right behind the cab where the smoke unit is. You want to take this off, put in your smoke fluid, and then snap it back into position. There are ball bearings on all axles and gearboxes, and the motors are designed for low amperage draw. This SD45 also comes with directional head and marker lights. When the unit goes in reverse, the front LEDs show red. When the unit is going forward, the back LEDs are red, and when you go to reverse, the light comes on. Well, it looks great on the outside. Let's take a look on the inside. There are six screws that you need to remove to take off the top of the unit. There are four in the back and two in the front. Make sure you only take out the screws that have an arrow. There's only six screws, there's six arrows. If you start taking out additional screws, you're going to be taking out too many screws and other pieces will come loose. You only need to take out the six screws to take off the top of the unit. 
If you've already installed the handrails, make sure you take the handrails out of the side of the cab and pull them away so you don't scratch up the paint. Then if you just slowly lift by the front, evenly, you'll be able to take the top off. Don't pull too far because there are wires connecting the top to the bottom. So just what is inside? Well, in the base, there are wires that go from the motors to a circuit board. And in turn, this circuit board is plugged into the top part where the electronics are. While you have the unit open, it's great to see the detail inside of the cab. Behind the cab is where you'll find the smoke unit, the main electronics board where you can add remote control or DCC, and underneath the back fans you'll find the speaker. We're updating all of our engines here at lsol.com to the new train engineer receiver. All you have to do is unplug the dummy plug and then take your train engineer receiver board, align up the pins to the hole, push it in place, and you have remote control installed. Since we do things somewhat temporarily at times, we also needed to install the link switch, but we didn't feel like drilling any holes today, so we slipped it through the top opening of where the top hatch is, and then we removed one of the clips so it would not interfere or pinch the wire. We then take the other end of the link button and plug it into the board. We then put the top of the unit back on, and now we can put our top cover for the switches back on and it won't interfere with the button that we've placed there for linking. And that's all there is to it. With the train engineer installed, we're ready to run remote control on this specific unit. It ran great inside. Let's take a look and see how it ran outside. We have our new SD45 Great Northern We've got one of our old SD45 workhorses running on our outdoor layout. 